Political independence in 1960 came with huge responsibility for Nigeria. This involved not just the development of its own legal code, but also a judicial system for the proper interpretation of these laws and administering justice for its citizens. Political independence in 1960 came with a huge responsibility for Nigeria. This involved not just the development of its own legal codes, but also a judicial system for the proper interpretation of those laws and administering justice for its citizens. Three years after independence, Nigeria assumed full control of its system of justice administration when the Privy Council ceased to be the country's highest appellate court. The 1963 constitution vested the power on the Federal Supreme Court, headed by the late Justice Aditukumbo Ademola, the first indigenous chief justice of Nigeria, supported by a strong bench of experienced impartial justices. A further amendment to the constitution in 1979 and later in 1999 reaffirmed the status of the Apex Court while changing its name to simply the Nigerian Supreme Court. However, the British common law system, Nigeria's colonial heritage, was and still remained applicable in the country. Over the years and decades, the court has played a vital role in interpreting the country's indigenous laws, whether civil or criminal, building a massive collection of jurisprudence along the way. The courts were independent and courageous in their judgments, attributes that many Nigerians today demand of the judiciary. For instance, Nigeria's Prime Minister from 1960 to 1966 was reported to have commended the then Chief Justice Ademola, who had entered judgment against the government in a case where the federal government attempted to probe the National Bank of Nigeria. In the book, A Right Honourable Gentleman, authored by the Colonial Administrative Secretary Trevor Clark, Prime Minister Balewa was quoted as telling Justice Ademola that if he does anything wrong and is brought before him, deal with me and if necessary, send me to jail. Military interregnum and suspension of parts of the constitution did not also cow the judiciary despite the promulgation of decrees to weaken the powers of the court while granting the military legislative functions in addition to its executive powers. A case in point is the widely referenced case of Military Governor of Lagos State versus Emeka Ojuku, where the court slammed the military for executive recklessness, forceful eviction of Ojuku from his Ikoyi residence when the dispute over ownership was still pending in court. Another aspect where the Nigerian judiciary has developed tremendously is its electoral jurisprudence, which has become a reference for other national jurisdictions. It is my unique honor to address you on this day. As the country celebrates its citizen independence, analysts say more still needs to be done in judicial protection of the rights of its citizens by the judiciary of today. As we are going into 63 years, I am pleading with the judiciary. They should be careful because when we do not have strong institutions, we could still have strong individuals that want to manipulate the institutions for their own selfish ends. And the only protection that the system will have is the judiciary. When people are going to judiciary, it is to make sure that the peaceful transfer of power as ensured by democracy, which is government of the people, by the people, for the people, is ensured. They should be careful the way they deliver judgment. It is not the duty of the judiciary to make the law. Civil cases, including those seeking remedies for abuse of their rights, have piled up in courts for decades. One of such was the case of Gladys Ukeji on the rights of inheritance of a female child, which began in 1983. The case spent 31 years from the Lagos High Court until it was decided at the Supreme Court in 2014. A review of the Nigerian judiciary suggests that the past two decades have not really been glory years as much as it was in the early decades. Judiciary have a prominent role to play. A prominent role to play in the sense that they are the last hope of everyone. Uh, and they, they should be able to stand and become neutral. 
so that they can take decisions that will be able to move the nation forward. So we expect a lot from the judiciary, especially in Nigeria, for them to be able to do the needful to move Nigeria forward. Reports of corruption among some members of the bench has weakened public trust in the judiciary, especially the court system, as much as the delay in justice administration has negatively impacted public confidence. The government needs to come out with a clear anti-corruption policy. We don't know the policy of this government with respect to anti-corruption. You know, the president should tell us what you know, he wants to do about transparency. If you are collecting taxes, are we going to more taxes? We need to be, we need to assure the public that the taxes will not end up being privatized, being, you know, being, being embezzled, being misappropriated. We need good governance. We need transparency in this country at all levels, at the highest level, at the federal government level, state government level, local government level, in all the agencies, in our national, national and private lives. These are problems which the heads of courts and relevant institutions have at one time or another acknowledged themselves. But while they claim to be working on addressing these challenges, the results remain far from obvious.